Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome back to part two of day number 19 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. If you haven't watched part one, then be sure to click the link below in the video description and watch that first. In the first video, we created our box and created the sketch for our hinge. Let's go ahead and turn the hinge sketch into a three-dimensional object. I'm going to zoom in and look at the sketch from a slight angle. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the bottom and then the outermost circle. And then right click on the selection and click on press pull. Then I'm going to change the extent to two object. That way if I ever update the size of the box, the hinge will automatically update for us. I'll also select extend faces under chain faces, and then I'll select new body as the operation. So we can hide this hinge as we build the other parts. I'll click okay and then rename this bottom hinge in the Fusion 360 browser. Then I'll hide the bottom hinge by clicking on the light bulb in the browser and I'll reshow the hinge sketch. This time, while holding down the shift key, I'll select all three circles and the top hinge. I'll right click again and select press pull, and then we'll change the extent to two object again. We'll also select extend faces for chain faces and then make sure that new body is set as the operation. After clicking OK, I'll rename this to top hinge in the browser and then click the light bulb icon to hide the body. Now making sure that my sketch is still on, I'll select only the inner circle and I'll hit letter E for extrude and I'll extrude this to the edge of the box. I'll change the extent to two object once again. We'll also have to select extend faces for chain faces and then make sure that new body is set as the operation. After clicking OK, I'll rename this body to pin. And for now, I'll go ahead and hide the pin. So up to this point, we have the form of our box and we have part of the hinge done, but we need to break up the parts of the hinge so they actually interlock properly. I'll go ahead and hide everything except the bottom box. And then right click on the top surface of the bottom box here and I'll select create sketch. I'm going to hit letter R on my keyboard for rectangle, and I'm going to draw a rectangle starting at the center origin. I'll make it 5.5 millimeters long, so it's as long as our hinge, and then for the width, I'll type out wall thickness to call that parameter. At this point, we'll want to draw a few more rectangles for the gaps. So this hinge will actually twist and work properly. I'll hit letter R on my keyboard to draw a rectangle right next to this one. I'll make it 5.5 millimeters long, hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And for the width, I'll use the gap parameter. Now I'll want to mirror these rectangles in just a second. So I'll first need to draw a line down the middle with letter L for line. And before I draw the line, I'll select construction in the line dialog box. Then I'll click in the middle here where you see the triangle or the midpoint constraint, and I'll just drag out to a random distance, click with my mouse, and then hit the escape key. Now before we mirror, I'll have to create one more gap rectangle. And I want these hinges to be divided up in approximately thirds. So I'm going to hit L for line again, and I'll draw another construction line down 11.5 millimeters. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, 
and then hit the escape key. I'll draw another rectangle with letter R and I'll click on the endpoint of the line and make this 5.5 millimeters long. Hit the tab key and use the gap user parameter for the width. Now it's important to note that I'm hitting the tab key after typing out these dimensions in order to lock them in place. And before I click with my mouse to set the rectangle, I want to make sure that the construction is turned off. Next, I'll select the Mirror Sketch tool from the Sketch drop-down list. I'll click and drag over all of the rectangles to select them, and I'll select the construction line as the mirror line and click OK. And before we go on, I'll double check that all of my lines are black, signifying that they are fully constrained. At this point, I'll hit letter E for extrude, and then I'll select all of the gap rectangles, or all of the rectangles here except the outer two. Then, in the Fusion 360 browser, I will turn on all of the bodies except for the pin because we need that to be solid all the way across. In the Extrude dialog box, I'll change the direction to two sides. I'll select all for the extent of both sides and I'll make sure that the operation is set to cut. And the last thing I'll check here is the objects to cut. So I'll toggle this open and I'll want to make sure that the bottom hinge and the top hinge are selected and I'll click OK. Now, if you look in the Fusion 360 browser, you'll see that we have all kinds of different bodies because we cut our hinge into multiple bodies. So we'll have to delete a few of these in order to get our hinge to work. I'm going to turn off the first and third parts of the top hinge by going through these bodies and seeing which ones they are. You'll notice when I hover, they have transparency, and when I select them, they turn blue. I'll also go ahead and turn off the middle body of the bottom hinge. Then. I'll hold down the command key on my Mac or the control key if you're using Windows and I'll select the bodies that we just turned off. And I'll right click and select remove. Because remove will take the features off the browser, but it will keep them in the timeline down here at the bottom. So if I were to go back through these steps, I could see that in the history. Whereas the delete key will get rid of all traces of the object. And if we go ahead and take a look at the hinge, you'll notice that we deleted the opposite parts. So each part of the hinge actually has space to revolve around that center pin. So at this point, we'll want to create a component for the top of the box so we can then rotate the box around in order to 3D print this. I'll right click on the top body and I'll click Create Components from Bodies. Now you'll notice that this placed the component within the bottom component that we started off with, which we don't want. So I'll click and drag the top body component to the top of the browser tree and you'll see that it is now nested as the same level as the bottom box component. And I'll go ahead and rename it by double clicking on it and typing out top box. And if I toggle these component folders back to open, you'll see that some of our top bodies are still in the bottom component. So we can just hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and select all of the bodies with top. And I'll also turn on the pin and select that as well. And I'll click and drag all of them to the top box component. Now, if we toggle each component on and off, you'll see that we have the bodies correctly nested under the components. At this point, the last thing we'll need to do is add a joint so we can rotate the lid around. 
That way we can 3D print the box with both lids touching the build plate surface. I'll go up to the assemble menu and I'll select as built joint, which allows us to position components relative to one another and it also lets us add a motion. I'll select both components and you may see your box rapidly shake here because the motion was set to rigid. So we'll want to change that to revolute. And then I'll zoom in on the pin and I'll select the center of the pin or the circle here. And if I go ahead and zoom out and play this motion again, you'll see that our box is revolving around the pin just like we wanted. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I can double click on this revolute arrow and you'll see that I can open and close the lid of the box by dragging this slider around. Now you could print the box with the lid in any direction, but to be most efficient and to come out with the best print quality, we'll want to type out 180 degrees for the rotation. So doing this, we'll put both lids of the box flat to the build surface. And I'll go ahead and click enter on the keyboard. The last thing I'll show you here is how to shrink this box size down so you can 3D print the hinge without having to wait for the entire box to print. And this is a good idea when coming up with new objects so we can test functionality without wasting time and filament. I'll double click on the original box sketch in the browser. And I can change the length of the box to 10 millimeters then hit stop sketch and we can change the height by editing our user parameters. So if you remember, we'll have to go up to the modify menu and then select change parameters and I'll change the box height value to 20 millimeters and click OK. Now if I zoom in, you'll see that our hinge size actually didn't change one bit, which is what we wanted. So again, we've shrunk our box size so this will print much faster and so we can test out the hinge. And then if the hinge does print correctly, we can always go back and change the parameters to make this box any size that we want. Lastly, to 3D print this box, I can right click on the top level assembly and click Save as STL. And in the Save as STL dialog box, I will make sure that the refinement is set to high. And then I can either output to a specific slicing software, or I can always unselect this, click OK, name the STL file, and save it to my local hard drive. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.